Welcome to a quick tutorial on securing your WordPress. I have gone ahead and logged into my sample WordPress and this is a relatively recent installation um, but I am up to date with running the um, latest WordPress version and there are plenty of tutorials out there that are showcasing WordFence but I'm going to go ahead and do one here because this interface looks slightly different from older versions. So let's get started. WordFence is a security plugin. I'm going to go to plugins. There's plenty of information on the internet as to why you would want to install something like WordFence. Akismet does something very similar, so if you wanted to use that piece, you could do that as well. Um, I just happen to prefer WordFence. So I'm going to click on plugins, add new. Now I'm going to search plugins and I am going to search for WordFence, all one word. And this is the symbol that you should see when you get to the WordFence. Click on install now. Are you sure you want to install this plugin? Click on OK. It may take a moment to install. Once it's done, it will say successfully installed and I do want to activate the plugin. Now, once I've in activated the plugin, there's a couple of things. WordFence is automatically going to start with this little screen. I do not need to join the WordPress security email simply because I've done that before. So I'm going to uncheck that and I am going to click in here and um, type in a web address. This is going to be the web address that I would get alerted once there's a problem that WordFence has detected. So it's important that you do get alerted. That way it will push out to your email so that you don't have to constantly check it. But I do need to remember to click on Get Alerted. Now in this particular case we can click on Start the Tour. I'm going to go ahead and close it. I don't want to take the tour and we notice over here on the left hand side WordFence is now installed. I'm going to click on that. To run a scan, I would simply click on WordFence on the left, start a WordFence scan on the right. Now generally speaking, even though it's a brand new installation, there's usually a file or two that it uh, flags as being problematic. And I would know that by scrolling down, and here it's going through all of my little files, finally. Okay, once I've run the scan, WordPress, excuse me, WordFence has come back with a um, WP config sample file as being modified. All this is saying is that the installation that I picked up had some modifications to it. That may have come from my hosting company. It could have come from a theme. It is not um, a significant issue. However, I'm going to go ahead and click on restore the original file of this version of this file just so that I make sure that I do not have any problems on my scan and so then I can scan again. The other piece on this particular page, do you want WordFence to stay up to date automatically? I always enable auto scan but you can also change that over here under options which is where we are going to go next. If I go under options there are several things in here that I suggest you just leave as the default. Um, first of all, I would let all of these first three pieces run regularly. Um, I would enable automatic scheduled scans. I would update auto WordFence automatically. And um, this is where I can also change where that email is sent to. Don't worry if your security level looks custom or says that it's custom. Um, some of the choices that you make will change this. So let's go ahead and go on to other choices here. Under the alerts, where it says email me when WordFence is automatically updated, I usually leave that unchecked only because I'm, I'm trusting that WordPress is going to update itself in the background, but I don't necessarily need to know that when that happens. Um, I, I will also come over here when it says alert me when someone with an administrator access signs in. That really means that generally speaking, um, I would be logged or the system would send me an email once I logged in. I don't necessarily need to know that. 
if I'm the only administrator in the system, I can get away with unchecking that. Um, on the other hand, if I've got several authors in the system and I want to kind of keep an eye on when they are posting things and or go check and make sure that their work is okay, I can set it so that it alerts when a non-admin user signs in. I'm not going to worry about that in this particular case because I don't have um, um, non-admin users signing in here. Um, don't log signed in users with publishing access. Again, this is turned on so that it wouldn't falsely alert you on things, but um, if you have a non-admin logging in and you do want to track them, you would want to uncheck that. In terms of um, these pieces scans to include, there are a couple of different things here and then they've got little um, information bullets here that you can go explore what those mean. I generally speaking leave these as a default under the firewall rules. I usually block fake Google crawlers. Now there are a couple of different uh, other tutorials online that explain what these pieces will do for you in terms of throttling requests. For example, a crawler is an automated piece of software that goes through your website and categorizes things and this reports back to search engines such as Google and that's how they build up their search engine database. But if in fact a crawler is taking a very, very long time in your site, it could slow it down. So you might want to throttle that. In our resources, I will post a video or I'll post a link to a video that has a couple of good explanations on that. Um, generally leave these pieces alone. You can certainly um, click on immediately lock out invalid usernames, although I do not. I don't because I do not want a hacker to get a hint that that is not a username. For example, if this were on and the user tried the word admin and it immediately locked them out, that would kind of give them a signal that indeed admin is not a, uh, a valid username. So I'm going to leave them guessing, so I'm not going to worry about checking that off. And there are other pieces here. Generally speaking, I let them go. Um, there are plenty of pieces online that will show you how to configure these better so you can get really secure in your site. But for our basic purposes, as long as this is installed and is running and will alert you and is set to automatically scheduled scans, you are good to go.